So you know all about these automatic updates that we all get on our smartphones. The same thing happens on your computer and the same thing happens with your apps. And the reason is that technology is always changing and you keep needing security patches and enhancements because software viruses are constantly evolving and vulnerabilities are constantly appearing. Well, it turns out that the same thing happens in nature. The real life viruses out there are also constantly changing. And as they change, we become more vulnerable. So just like you update your smartphone every now and then, you need to update your vaccination every now and then. And it's just about time for a new COVID vaccine. Let's get into it. So the virus that causes COVID-19 has been around for almost four years. And in that time, it has spread in various waves and various parts of the world. And although there was a nice lull over the summer, what we are starting to see again is an increase in COVID cases. And that's true whether you look at the wastewater or if you look at test positivity rates or even if you look at hospitalization rates across the country. And like other respiratory viruses, this pattern of a fall wave has been seen pretty much every year since the pandemic started. And it might be because the virus replicates better in the drier and cooler air and because kids go back to school and because we tend to get together indoors instead of outdoors when it's cold out. And that means the virus has an easier time accumulating and spreading in those indoor spaces. And this virus has continually evolved and transformed itself over time. And each new variant has had slightly different properties, with the most important one being the highly contagious Omicron variant, which has been around for about two years now. And we've seen many different subvariants within that Omicron family. Now, those so-called bivalent vaccines that were released about a year ago did contain a new formulation of the vaccine against the earlier forms of Omicron called BA1 and BA4 or 5. But Omicron didn't stop at BA4 or 5. It has continued to evolve. And that's why when you have a new virus, you need a new vaccine. So what's different about this new vaccine? Well, it's the first vaccine that doesn't contain any of the original vaccine from three years ago. It's a monovalent vaccine, and it's designed specifically for the XBB.1.5 version of the Omicron. And you can get this as a primary vaccine if you haven't been vaccinated before, or you can get it as a booster shot if you have been vaccinated. The reason it covers the XBB is that back in May, when the World Health Organization made a recommendation on which variant should be covered in the next vaccine, the XBB.1.5 variant made up the majority of cases in countries like Canada, the US, and much of Europe. So that's the variant that they asked the vaccine makers to target. Now, we have the base for these mRNA vaccines and changing the protein that's coded for in those vaccines to match this new variant is much faster than making a new vaccine from scratch. But it does still take some time and it does have to be tested. But the virus doesn't wait for the vaccine to be ready, it keeps evolving. So fast forward four months, and the dominant strain more recently is what's called EG.5.1. So is the new vaccine perfectly matched to the current variants? No. But the good news is that the current variants are offshoots of that XBB family, which means that they are very similar to the variant that the vaccine was developed for. And studies have shown that the antibodies that we produce after vaccination with this new vaccine have a strong what's called cross-reactivity with the EG.5.1. In other words, they neutralize that variant very well. Now, some of you who are following this kind of alphabet soup of variants might have also heard of the BA.2.86. And the reason that one is getting a lot of attention is that it has a ton of mutations. In fact, it's just about as different from the Omicron variant as the Omicron variant was from the original virus from 2019. And the fear was that all of those mutations would make it more dangerous. But so far, what we're seeing is that it has not shown an ability to spread faster, it has not shown an ability to cause more severe disease than other variants, and most importantly, it doesn't have what we call immune escape. In other words, it doesn't seem to escape the immunity that we have from prior vaccination or infection. And again, studies have shown that getting the new vaccine increases antibody levels against this variant by about 10 times. So billions of people have gotten these mRNA vaccines. We know they're safe and very effective. And in the US, the FDA approved the new Pfizer and Moderna shots on September 11th. The CDC then recommended that anyone over six months old should get one. Health Canada approved the Pfizer shot the very next day and their advisory committee basically recommended the same thing. 
Now they emphasize that the most important people to get vaccinated are people who are 65 and over, people with chronic conditions, and people who are pregnant. Those are the people who tend to get really sick from COVID, and the main point of vaccination is to protect yourself from severe disease. Now, if you're young and healthy, the benefit of vaccination is smaller because the risk of that severe disease is also smaller. But on the other hand, the risk of vaccination is so small that the risk-benefit ratio still favors getting the vaccine. In case you're wondering, the vaccine can cause a rare complication called myocarditis, or inflammation of the heart. And that mainly occurs in young males, and it resolves quickly in the vast majority. But studies have shown that even in males 12 to 17 years old, the virus itself has about a five times higher chance of causing myocarditis than the vaccine. So the vaccine is still the better bet. And even if you're not worried about getting really sick, you should worry about long COVID. About 10% of people infected with the Omicron variant develop those long-term symptoms, and often it's even if that infection was mild. And the more infections you get, the higher your chances of getting long COVID. On the other hand, being vaccinated is associated with a 40% lower chance of developing long COVID. And if you're wondering about timing, we know that immunity starts to decline about six months after your last vaccine shot or your last infection. So if it has been six months or more since your last dose or your last bout of COVID, go out and get this new vaccine as soon as you can. The other reason to do this is that the COVID wave might peak at the same time as the flu season and the RSV season, which raises the possibility of this dreaded triple-demic, which was seen in some parts of the Southern Hemisphere this year, so that might be what we face when these viruses make their way to the Northern Hemisphere. And the goal there is to really keep our hospitals functioning by limiting the number of people who need to be hospitalized for these various infections, including COVID. Now, some people are tired of getting these shots, I get that. But the reality is that just like the flu and many other viruses that we now live with, this virus is here to stay. And just like the flu vaccine, we might just settle into a sort of annual vaccine routine, or maybe even twice yearly as a vaccine option, especially for those at higher risk. But all that really depends on how this virus evolves. We don't control that, but what we do control is the fact that we can protect ourselves by getting vaccinated. So the virus is evolving, cases are increasing, hospitalizations are increasing, and our old vaccines haven't changed in a year. So like so many other things in your life, your protection needs an update. So go get your update. Go out and get a shot of the new COVID vaccine. For more on health and science, subscribe to The Feed.